Tomo News presents Global Warming. Climate change has already caused islands to vanish. A new study led by University of Queensland researchers say that changes in global climate and the subsequent sea level rise has already led to the loss of multiple Pacific islands. A team of Australian scientists say that Isabel, one of the main islands of the Solomon Archipelago, has already lost five of its reef islands. Another six islands on Isabel have declined in area by more than 20 percent between 1947 and 2014. Meanwhile, residents of the island of Nuatambu have been forced to relocate to the nearby main island of Choiseul because of flooding. Of the dozens of homes that once stood on Nuatambu, at least 11 have already been swept away by the rising waters. While the global average rate of sea level rise has been 3.2 millimeters per year since 1993, the Solomon Islands have experienced an average rise by about 7 to 10 millimeters per year since 1994. The research team, who published their study in the journal Environmental Research Letters on Friday, discovered that the sea level rise has destroyed villages that have existed since the 1930s and has displaced numerous communities. Cooling the planet at a cost. As temperatures on Earth reach unprecedented highs, extreme, potentially disastrous weather will become more likely. Scientists say there may be ways to intervene, but warn they come with risky consequences. Researchers are investigating strategies for geoengineering, one of which is mimicking the effects of a volcanic eruption. Erupting volcanoes spew out large amounts of sulfur-rich gases, which help cool the Earth by reflecting solar radiation back into space. The same effect could be recreated using planes that would inject sulfur into the atmosphere. But to cool the planet by one degree Celsius, 6,700 injections are needed eventually, which would cost 20 billion US dollars annually. This approach also risks destroying the ozone layer and reducing rainfall, enough to potentially cause droughts in certain regions. A similarly drastic approach to cooling the Earth can be achieved by thinning heat-trapping cirrus clouds. Seeding causes the clouds to break apart and lets more heat escape. The seeding process, however, must be precise, otherwise new cirrus clouds may form elsewhere and add to warming. But while sulfur injections and cirrus cloud seedings will cool the land, carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere remain the same, and ocean acidification continues. As such, researchers argue the two strategies should be deployed more as a last resort, adding that reducing carbon emissions are much more effective at curing climate change. Bummer, dude. Rising temperatures have caused a major downturn in male turtle populations in the northern Great Barrier Reef. New research has found that 99% of sea turtles in the Pacific Ocean's biggest green sea turtle rookery are female. Researchers suspect this is due to warming temperatures. A sea turtle's sex is temperature dependent. Males are born at around 27.7 degrees centigrade, while females are born at around 31 degrees centigrade. An area further south holds a ratio of two females to one male sea turtle. According to National Geographic, recent research looking at 75 rookeries from around the globe put the ratio at 3 to 1. If rising temperatures continue, male turtles may be wiped out. And nobody wants that. The Earth has its own way of cooling rising temperatures. Scientists have long speculated the Earth has a natural thermostat that regulates global temperatures by increasing or decreasing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Now, a new study suggests this could be true. Researchers have found a correlation between greater deposits of lithium in limestone rocks and warmer periods in the planet's history, when the Earth's weathering thermostat sped up. Carbon dioxide traps heat in the Earth's atmosphere. A dip in carbon dioxide levels can potentially cause an ice age, while a spike can make the planet heat up. The Earth regulates carbon dioxide through a process called the weathering thermostat. Carbon dioxide is removed from the atmosphere when it dissolves in rainwater and combines with rocks to form bicarbonate. When rocks dissolve in water, the bicarbonate combines with calcium to form limestone, locking carbon dioxide inside. Movement of tectonic plates then draws the limestone under the Earth's crust. The carbon dioxide eventually returns to the atmosphere when it separates from the limestone and is thrust out in volcanic eruptions. According to researchers, the Earth's thermostat responds to changes in the planet's temperature. Heat speeds up the weathering process, while cold slows it down. 
Other influences on the climate include solar activity, the growth of vegetation, and the impact of human activity. Scientists believe the Earth's natural thermostat cannot keep up with man-made climate change and are now looking into ways to artificially speed up the weathering process to counter global warming. Thought climate change predictions were scary. Well, they just got a whole lot scarier. The possible effects of climate change are far worse and could come far sooner than we previously thought. So says James Hansen, a leading climate change researcher who was among the first to warn the public about the serious effects of the buildup of carbon dioxide. The former director of NASA's Institute for Space Studies, along with 18 other leading climate scientists, published a paper this week predicting rapid sea level rises could happen within decades. The team of researchers primary claim that as the ice sheets in Greenland and Antarctica melt, a layer of cold fresh water will build up over the ocean, trapping warmer, salty ocean water, with which it doesn't easily mix, underneath the surface, and thereby leading to a feedback loop that causes ice shelves to melt even more rapidly, effectively slowing down and possibly shutting down ocean circulation. An idea apparently not too dissimilar from the premise of the 2004 disaster movie, The Day After Tomorrow. The scientists believe that this ice melting will cool polar regions of the globe and warm areas around the equator, causing stark temperature variances it could make superstorms, such as Hurricane Sandy, which struck the U.S. East Coast with devastating effect in 2012, far more frequent. To argue their case, the researchers controversially claim that storms during the warm Eemian period 120,000 years ago were powerful enough to lift massive boulders, 1,000 tons in size, from the bottom of the ocean and hurl them ashore. Hansen and his team believe a multimeter sea level rise could occur before the end of the century, and envelop all of the planet's coastal cities. Despite the dire predictions, Hansen, in an accompanying video, explained that there may possibly still be an opportunity to reverse this worrying trend, saying, quote, I doubt that we have passed the point of no return, but frankly, we're not certain of that. Snow in the Sahara? Sounds like climate change. The head of Russia's environmental monitoring agency says increasingly frequent snowfalls on one of the hottest places on Earth stems from global warming. On January 7th, a blanket of snow fell on the Sahara Desert, near the northern Algerian town of Ain Sefra. The Sahara has been known to get as hot as 122 degrees Fahrenheit during the day, but while temperatures drop at night, it's unusual to see snow due to the dry air. In 1979, snow fell in the area for 30 minutes. It was 37 years before the next snowfall, but only a year passed between then and the most recent one, which saw 15 inches of snow cover. This along with a cold spell in the U.S., an unusually warm Russian winter, and rainfall and flooding in Western Europe, it's evidence that global warming is on the rise. With the state of the climate as dismal as it is, and with no signs of improvement, guess there will be more extreme weather in our future. Yikes. Pretty soon, some sharks will have a Napoleon complex. Damn it, climate change! Climate change may actually be altering the size of the planet's fish. A recent study published in the journal Global Change Biology suggests that rising temperatures in oceans might be shrinking fish. Warmer waters mean less oxygen, something fish need to grow into adulthood. Fish use their gills to breathe underwater. From an evolutionary perspective, less oxygen would see gills adapting to warmer waters by becoming smaller. Researchers found that warming oceans may cause fish such as tuna and trout to shrink by around 30 and 8 percent, respectively. They estimate that worldwide, this trend could reduce the amount of fish that can be caught for food by 30 percent. But hey, at least on the positive side, you might soon be able to put a pet shark in a fish bowl. The future may be rainier than expected. A new study prepared by scientists at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory shows the amount of rain in tropical regions may increase in the future due to global warming. The atmospheric general circulation above the equator is known as the Hadley cell, which includes a wide zone of rising air. The zone has been observed to be narrowing over the past 30 to 40 years due to climate change. This causes a decrease in tropical high clouds. The decrease leads to a cooler tropical atmosphere, which then requires increased latent heating to balance the cooling from high cloud shrinkage. This leads to increased precipitation that would occur primarily over the tightened convective zones near the equator. 
NASA study also highlights the intensified hydrological cycle that comes with a wet gets wetter and dry gets drier spatial pattern. That doesn't sound like a good thing, does it? Will California soon be underwater? Researchers are warning that melting ice shelves in Antarctica could cause sea levels to rise higher than expected, with the changes being most apparent in California. Scientists theorize that due to the Earth's rotation and gravitational pull, melting ice in Antarctica, particularly in the western portion, is pulled toward the California coast. This makes rising sea levels more dramatic in the region. For every foot of global sea level rise caused by the melting West Antarctic, sea levels will rise approximately 1.25 feet on the California coast. In 2100, sea levels could rise as high as 6.9 feet in San Francisco and 7.1 feet in La Jolla. The California Ocean Protection Council plans to hold a series of workshops and propose measures to address this issue. Tree-killing beetles set to invade northern U.S. and Canada. A recent study shows a warming climate has expanded tree-killing southern pine beetles' habitats and forests in the northern U.S., which means southern Canada could soon be ravaged by the pests in the coming decades. The southern pine beetle, one of the world's most aggressive tree-killing insects, has typically only lived in Central America and the southeastern United States. Thousands of adult beetles can attack a tree in just two months by carving S-shaped tunnels under the bark. It is predicted that the beetles should gradually spread north along the Atlantic coast all the way up to Canada's Nova Scotia. By 2080, the pest could infest red and jack pines, which extend across more than 270,000 square miles in the U.S. and Canada, which is roughly the size of Afghanistan. According to the U.S. Forest Service, infestations of pine beetles have cost an estimated annual timber loss of $100 million from 1990 to 2004 in the southeastern U.S., 